Hello there, welcome to my channel once again, Nana Econometrics. As usual, if today is your first time joining us, kindly click on the subscribe button below and on the notification bell so that you don't miss any equally important subsequent videos. In today's video, we'll be looking at the presentation on the ARDL model, that is the autoregressive distributed lag model, and in our subsequent video, tackle the panel model, specifically the fixed and the random effect. Having said this, pick your notebook and pen and let's zoom into today's lesson. Okay, so this is the outline of the presentation. Um, the first session I'll talk about the autoregressive uh, distributed lag model in short mm -hmm. the ARDL model and the last session or the second session probably talk about the heterogeneous panel regression model specifically the fixed effect and the random effect so this is the pattern of which the presentation is going to take place brief background uh, talk about the what that is what actually the ARDL and the panel model entails and move on to talk about when to estimate the ARDL model, maybe as a researcher, when you're thinking of a model to carry out, when do I actually carry out an ARDL model? And the last one we'll look at how to go about it. That is how to specify an ARDL regression model or maybe the panel regression model. Okay, so let's quickly move on. I want to start by saying that um, Economists and researchers like my colleagues and myself usually face method selection problem while working with time series data. Why? Because time series data possesses certain specific or inherent characteristics such as strength and structural break, which makes analysis of them quite cumbersome, uh, unlike other form of data like the cross-sectional data and the likes okay so common method that are used to analyze other types of data may not be suitable to analyze time series data owing to its inherent properties that they tend to have such as the trend and the structural breaks yeah so in view of that we say applying a suitable methodology for time series data is the most crucial part of every time series data analysis why? Because misspecification might lead to prejudice or, or, or bias estimate, which might not be unrealistic, okay? Which might not be unrealistic. And as a result, it will lead to a, a, a mixed judgment or wrong interpretation. So basically, uh, as selecting appropriate uh, methodology for time series is the most crucial part of every time series data because of its inherent characteristics. And therefore, there is the need to ensure that we come out with a, a, a good or a suitable uh, 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 model that will be able to meet the nature of the time series data. Basically, this is much embedded or centered on the stationarity of the variable, okay? On the stationarity of the variable. So someone will say the first point of call to undertake while dealing with time series data is to look at how stationary your variables of interest are and to, to, to do that we have so many forms or different types of stationarity tests such as the ADF, the augmented decupola, we have that of the Phillips and the parents, we have the Quasin and the Mike's uh, Shin and, uh, uh, and, and Smith, okay, all are different forms of stationary tests that we can use to check how stationary our variables of interest are under that notion we'll be able to determine which type of a, a, a model is it suitable for us to fit for a regression or our variables of interest as far as they being time series data so i wrote here that primarily the method selection for time series data analysis is based on the unit root test which is determined by the stationarity of the variable okay why because most method commonly used to analyze stationary time series data 
will not be appropriate for analyzing non-stationary time series data. So that 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 calls for the reason why we have to undertake our first preliminary test, that is the stationary test or the unit root test, in order to ensure coming out with an appropriate uh, 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 regression model that will be able to fit the nature of your variables of interest. And as a result, you'll be able to come out with a good uh, uh, regression which will have uh, uh, its estimate or parameters being on by us and you have a realistic estimation and interpretation. So uh, I, I come up with a, a, a basic method for selection of time series data. All this happens to form part of the background information. Okay, this one might not be comprehensive enough, but it gives us the first point of call or a tip of for us to have in mind or bear in mind when dealing with time series data. As we already made mention of that, time series data uh, is one of the data that is quite hectic because of its inherent characteristics such as the breakpoint or the structural breaks and the likes. And therefore, uh, from the diagram over here, I believe it's uh, or, uh, uh, visible for all of us to see. So I've written basic method selection for time series data. So as I indicated, the unit root is the basic form or the most uh, preliminary test that needs to be undertaken before you carry out any uh, uh, um, uh, time series data analysis. Now we are saying based on your unit root test, if you tend to have all your variables stationary, then it will be much easier or simple for you to use the OLS, that is the ordinary least square or the VAR, VAR model. Sorry, the VAR model, the vector autoregressive model. Why? Because those models are, are, are specially instituted purposely to handle uh, uh, stationary variables. When we say stationary or uh, stationary variables, they are variables that tend to have their values of trend and uh, not deviating from its long run uh, average value or basically the variance the mean and the covariance tend to be constant doesn't vary with time okay that is the unit root okay so when we say your variable are stationary then you could go in for ols or the var model basically most accounting data are usually found to be much stationary so in most cases you see people using much of the ols in uh, estimating their data or like or economic data which are, are usually dynamic in nature they tend to be non-stationary why because the variance in the mean tend to vary with respect to time so we are saying that now when you tend to have your variables of interest which are non-stationary then you have to think of either the johansson test or the ARDM model. When your variables are not stationary, then it will be appropriate or suitable as a, 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 as a first point of guide to think of using a, a Johansson test or the ARDM model. But here, in this case, the Johansson test physically or work best when you have your variables of interest all integrated at the order of one. If all your variables of interest are integrated of order one, then it becomes much easier for you to, to use the Johansson test. Unlike the ARDM model, which has a superior advantage over the Johansson test and probably the OLS, you can estimate your variable or fit your regression, even if you have mixed level of uh, 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 integration or stationarity, okay? Maybe you can have your some of your variables of interest for instance maybe you have inflation exchange rate um, um, let's say gdp or have different levels of fluctuation or have different levels of random work and therefore some might be stationary at level some might be stationary at first order of integration some might be stationary at, 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 at second order of integration but the 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 the, the caveat here is that when you want to work with ARDM model, it doesn't matter the level of integration, either being one or zero. But with Johansson, all have to be in the same level of uh, integration order, which is specifically one, if you want to work with the Johansson test of co-integration. Now we are saying that with the Johansson test or the ARD model, if you realize there is co-integration, then you go ahead to estimate the ECM 
that is the error correction model and probably carry out your causality test to determine the flow or direction of causality that exists among the variable likewise if you also found a co-integration you also want to go through the same process dealing with the Johansson test but this is what we intend to talk more about in our subsequent um, slides okay we'll be talking more about the ARDM model so these are basic um, and the pin is of background as far as dealing with time series data and specifically today we're talking about the ARDM model so some of my other standard least square regression that includes lacks of both dependent variables and the explanatory variables as regressors so the autoregressors basically means the lag orders of the dependent variables and the distributed lag means the the lag orders of the explanatory variables. Yeah, so uh, as I was explaining, um, I, 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 okay, let me continue. It, it, it's an OLS based model, which I, I already indicated since the time. So you can estimate the ARDM model using the OLS estimation, okay, when you know your order of integration. When you know your order of integration, it becomes much easier for you to input it directly and estimate it that way. And we said you can use to fix for non-stationary as well as stationary or mixed with other levels of integration, but it shouldn't be of integration too. That is the caveat over there. And that is what I was trying to indicate in the first part of the diagram. So we say, although the ARD model has been used in by most econometric for decades, it have gained popularity in recent years as a method of examining co-integrating relationship between variables through the work of Pearson and Shin, okay, owing to its inherent or superior advantages over other forms of uh, co-integrating uh, co test analysis. So what are these advantages we're talking about? We are saying one, uh, the ARDM model is applicable regardless of whether the underlying regressors are purely stationary, purely integrated, or mutually integrated. Okay, you say the bound tests also allow co integration relationship to be estimated by the OLS once the lag order of the model is identified. We are saying that the ARDM model has a superior advantage in the sense that it is able to overcome endogenous problem which is uh, currently one of the common problems associated with most regression analysis. And it has the ability to overcome or to estimate long-run coefficient, which was found to be a problem in the angel Granger model of estimation. It can also be used to estimate the short-run and the long-run parameters or the coefficient simultaneously. And last but not the least, we said it's best fits or is able to produce robust uh, uh, estimate for, for a relative small sample, unlike that of the Johansson test. Okay, so these are the superior advantages of uh, the ARDO model, and this is one of the reasons, or some of the reasons, why it's gaining popularity of late. Now, a question is when do I estimate? Uh, among other reasons, I have. I have itemized only three over here, among other reasons, maybe as a researcher, you and I, thinking of when to estimate the ARDM model. One, if you want to undertake a dynamic relationship or interaction among variables with time series data in a single equation, that is, you want to consider uh, 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 the ARDM model, okay? when you also want to examine long run and short run relationship among the dependent variables and the regressors you also want to consider the ARD model and last but not the least um per what i've written over here if you want to overcome the problem of endogeneity which happens to be uh, the common trend of issues as far as uh, uh, regressions are concerned you want to consider the ARD model for your estimation um so these are some of the uh, advantages or, 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 or the underpinnings we want to consider when you want to, to, to uh, undertake an ARD or model, when you're thinking of a model to, to use for your regression, okay? So now let's look at how to construct the ARD model. 
Or is there any question, Professor? Or I can continue. Continue. Okay. Thank you. So we are saying how to construct an ARDA model. So uh, these are basic uh, procedure that I've written or itemized below. Okay. So if you want to construct an ARDA model, first and foremost, you want to check for your unit rule test and ensure that none of your variables under consideration or your variables of interest are not integrated of order two. The next thing is to run the ARDA bound test by way of trying to estimate whether there's a longer relationship among your variables of interest. If they are co-integrated, then you can specify both the long run and the short run, co uh, short run models, okay? Um, which you can go on further to estimate your ECM model and determine your uh, direction of causality among the variables. But if they are not co-integrated, then basically all that you've got to do is to specify only the short run model. That is also known as the ARDM model. And last but not the least, you want to run your diagnostic test in order to ensure that your, your, your results is robust and any form of interpretation or inference is made up from the results is not going to be misleading or neither is it going to be unrealistic, okay? And some of the diagnostic tests you want to consider is the normality test, the serial correlation and the heteroscedasticity test and the stability test You're using the calcium and the calcium square. So these are uh basic outline or procedure to go through when trying to go with an ARDM model. So uh, wait this, a moment. This... Go back. Wait a moment. Go back. Hi. Right. The first step you would need to check check you know the unit rule to ensure none of the variables integrated of order two. Why? Yes, that 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 is the caveat. Though uh ARDM model can carry out uh, uh, for mixed level of integration, none of your variables should be uh, integrated of order two. Why? Because if done so, you are going to have a uh, bias estimators. That is the, the, the conditions estimated, or the, let me put it, the precondition estimated by Perison. That is the uh, originators of the ARDR model. So ARD model can only handle the variables that 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 uh as integrated less than order two, right? You mean? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Got it. Continue. Brother, can I continue? Continue. Continue. Okay. Thank you. So um. This is the generalized ARD model, and the yt happens to be the dependent variable, usually also known as the vector of the variable. Vector in the sense that when dealing with an ARD model, uh, you want to consider all, or, or, or maybe all your variables of interest can also, at one point in time, can be used as a dependent variable. That is why, in the simplest term, saying the variable of what? The vector of the variable. Okay, so uh, yt is the dependent variable and x is the uh, explanatory variables, okay? And we say that the yt is a function of eight uh, uh, lag values and the current and the lag values of the exogenous variables in the models. We have the et to be the error term and we have the p and the q to be the optimal lag order for the dependent variable that is p and the independent variable that is q so basically this is how the uh, ARDM model generalize uh, a generalization okay or this is how it is being specified in the simplest form this is how it is specified in the simplest form okay so let's look at an expanded ARDM model uh, this is one of uh, this is just a, an excerpt of one of my papers I, I use the ARD model for, for estimation, okay? And this uh, constitutes of three variables. This constitutes of three variables. So, okay, uh, the ARD model. So, as I said early on, uh, the first thing is to take your unit root test and the next thing to look at your bound test, your co-integration. 
The hypothesis for the co-integration says that the uh, uh, parameters of the various variable is equal to zero. The alternate hypothesis saying the parameters or, 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 or the parameters of the various uh, variables are not equal to zero. Hypothesis zero or the no hypothesis is saying that there is uh, co-integration. The alternate hypothesis saying that there's no co-integration. So that, that is it. So per, per, per this, you estimate it uh, using the F, uh, F uh, statistics to check your dimension to see whether there's co-integration or not. And person, the, the originators of the ARDA model came out with uh, uh, what we call critical values. We have the upper critical values and the lower critical values. So when you estimate uh, uh, your f stats and your uh, f stat is bigger or huge than your uh, upper bound, then you could say that truly there is a co-integration among your variables. But if it falls below if this above the uh, upper critical bound, then there's co-integration. If it's below the lower critical bound, there's no co-integration. So in this case, for what I said, um, I have three variables of interest. It could be four, it could be five, depending on your research objective. Mine, in this case, one of the papers, uh, one of my papers, I use three, three, three uh, variables. So I was interested in the dynamic interaction between GDP, FDI, and the rare interest rate, okay? So uh, this is how to come out with the expanded model. As I said, the uh, all the variables of interest could be used at one point in time as dependent variables. So that is how it was estimated. So uh, the dependent variable have the uh, difference operator that is the, the triangle we see behind it. it. The first part, captures the long run estimate and the second part captures the short run estimate and we have the error term. So that that, that is how to estimate or expand your your generalized ARD model to capture all the various variables of interest you are using. So um, as indicated out of your B test bound or the bound test outcome, if there is no co-integration, you just specify the ARDL short run. So the ARDL short run, this, this is how it is being specified if there is no co-integration. But if there is co-integration, this is how you specify it. With, that is, you specify the ECM, okay? For the purposes of brevity, I couldn't write all the models for all the three uh, uh, dependent lines okay where uh, gdp becomes uh, dependent uh, fdi become dependent because of brevity but this is how you know the same procedure is carried throughout for instance if all your three variables of interest are co-integrated then you have to estimate what we call the vecm that is the vector uh, error correction model so basically this gives a, 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 a snapshot of what has to be done and how it has to be specified. But I didn't write all of them here, okay? So when there is no co-integration, this is how it is specified. You only specify the ARDM model, which is basically the short run model, and this is how to estimate it. But when there is co-integration, you estimate the ECM or the VECM, that is the vector error correction model. When there is co-integration among all your variables of interest. Now we have the uh, ECT, that is error correction term with a lambda beside it that captures the parameter of it, okay? Uh, which is always expected to be the negative, okay? Confirming the long run relationship that has already been estimated from the long run coefficient. The ECM are the residuals from the long run estimation that has jointly added to that of the short run estimate, okay? So the ECM captures the long run and the short run estimate. So uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the estimate or from the uh, ARDR model, we can also infer uh, causality among the variables using the T statistic. For instance, with the short run, uh, you can infer the 
causality among variables looking at the significant level of the t statistics level of the the various variables for instance if uh let me say the parameter of uh, gdpg is significant then i could say that the gdp the past realization of gp gdpg has a grandeur causality on the gdpg okay that is the current gdp i could also say likewise for fdi on gdpg that is uh, uh gdp growth okay if the uh, parameter is significant uh likewise with the long run if the lambda is significant lambda captures the parameter of the error correction term if it is significant then we could also affirm our level of uh, long run causality among your variables of interest so basically we say this is the mathematical computation of the lambda uh, the lambda captures the speed of adjustment parameter how well the the variable converges back to the long run when they deviate from the short run estimate so the ECM is the one lag period for the error correction term. And we have the A, B, sorry, A1, A2, A3 as the short run dynamic coefficient of the model and the adjusted long run equilibrium. So summary, what we are saying is that the outcome of the bound test indicates whether to specify the ARDL, the ECM or the VCEM model, okay? Now we say we specify the VCM if and only if there is co-integration from the three equations. In my case, I was looking at three uh, variables or three equations, okay? But if it is two, you can specify the VCM. If it is five, you just specify when co-integration exists among all the variables, when each variable is used as a dependent variable. Now we say we obtain the short run dynamic parameters by estimating the ECM or the VCM associated with the long run estimate. Now the short run causal effect is denoted by the T statistics as I've already explained on the explanatory variable, that is the short run coefficient. And the long run relationship between the variable denotes that there is grandeur causality at least in one direction, which is determined by the T statistics on the coefficient of the lag error correction term which i've already explained okay so according to perisan 2001 uh if there is co-integration that means there is a signpost that at least there is a unidirectional causality among your variables so we go around with our grandeur causality to determine the flow of causality among the variable the direction of causality among the variable so we estimate the grandeur causality to determine the direction of causality among the variable and the last thing to do, as already explained early on, is to carry out your diagnosis test to ensure that your resource is robust. So I also came out with a, 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 a let me see, a graphical snapshot, a quick one. So the unit rule test, uh, your variable should be integrated either of one and zero, but if it is of two, you stop. You can carry out the, the ARD model. So that is basically how it goes, okay? So basically all that I've explained is what I've given the snapshot of. Now, these are references of some of the works that apply ARD model from top journals. Um, okay, the first one happens to be a paper which I co-authored, that is the long run uh, money demand function that is set for stability in the 29th uh, European Union member country, an Asian general economy is an easier model, uh, easier general. And the next one uh, is from the general of finance. Yeah, that diagram of forms of uh, papers that have uh, uh, deployed the ARDM model in their analysis.